excited to see all of you here. This is a wonderful house. I'm Sandy McLeod. I'm executive director of Music Comp. I thank all the teachers and all the students and parents who've driven here today to Ludlow. And we've had wonderful rehearsals with the musicians, uh, some outstanding workshops, and great discussions about what we can do to make Music Comp work better for everybody. I'd like to thank our major sponsor, Music First. Music First is a company that deals in cloud computing software, and many of our schools are using cloud computing software from this program, so we're thrilled that Music First is a financial sponsor of our program. We have many other sponsors, we have many individuals, businesses, and we're thrilled that all of these people have supported Music Comp so that we can have uh, Opus 28, hopefully Opus 29, Opus 30, and on for a while longer. We have many younger students in the program, and I'd, I'd like to think that we can keep Music Comp going so that all of them can continue to compose for a long time. Thanks to our composer mentors who are here today, and now I'd like to introduce the two students who will be serving as announcers for the evening program, uh, Sage Lynn Green and Jonna Salzman from North Country Union High School, and they'll take it from here. Our first composition is The Sinking Ship by Alex Wick, a fifth grader from Champlain Elementary in Burlington. This work is a suspenseful piece about a sinking ship like the Titanic or the USS Arizona. The ship is sinking fast into the cold, icy water. Screams fill the air. Then, the ship disappears into the cold, murky waters. All that is left are a couple of lifeboats with a small amount of people in them. Noah Saberhagen joined us earlier today from George Mason High School in Virginia for his rehearsal. The teen opus is an English horn solo accompanied by a string quartet. It features two main themes that are developed throughout contrasting sections of, of counter melodies, modulation, and polyphonic textures.
What software program do you use to compose? I use Sibelius 7 to compose all my music. The technology has made it so that I can really hear um, how my piece is going to sound and the different things that I would, wouldn't necessarily be able to hear in my head if I were just writing it down on paper. Describe hearing your piece live with musicians for the first time. Hearing my piece for the first time played by actual musicians makes it so much more alive and real and it makes it, it gives it a new element that you can't just get from you know, listening to it on a computer. where you, you hit that and then you come down really, yep. really hard. Um, I'm not hearing quite as much of a, of a backing off of it. Yeah. Sure. Um, just, just a little bit more of that. Okay. Just like the last like, two measures. Okay. Just so that the ending is really dramatically loud. Yeah. 
How did your online mentor help you with your composition? Um, my online mentor, which was Eric Nielsen this time, he helped me uh, decide the structure of my piece and help develop the different styles that I was going to use in this piece. Could I make a suggestion? Uh, actually, two. One is that you might put a little bit of a break before the final note to place it uh, a little bit better, because right now it's a yeah instead of a so you can hit it. Yeah. Ah. I, I don't you'd like to share in this interview? Um, I want to thank all the mentors for helping so many students compose and just you know really be able to explore the music and be able to find you know who they are. I mean music helped me find who I am and I wouldn't have been able to really explore the music world without this program. Sage Lynn Green, a junior at North Country Union High School, wrote The Overshadow. Beginning slowly, her work depicts a sense of mystery. Through the use of dissonance and slow, long tones, it conveys confusion and vague gloom. The many fast sections of the overshadow is intended to, intended to convey intensity and yet still have that same mysterious unsureness. It also has a feeling of desperation, like it's reaching towards something. Emily and I'm from Wallingford Elementary School. 
What technology do you use to um, write music? I've used NoteFlight. It's a really enjoyable uh, software. I think it's really easy to use and it simplifies music composition. I'd recommend it. When you write music, do you write using an instrument or your voice and then put it down? Or do you use the computer? Do you mix, use a mix of both? Um, I like using the computer really because you can hear the notes as you're playing them and that way it's easier to harmonize and you don't have to um, put it from one place to another. It's easier. How did your mentor help you with your piece through the process? Um, he was a great help. I think he gave me a lot of, um, he taught me a lot of uh, ways to write in harmony and melody and contrasting uh, sounds um, and taught me a lot of great and useful knowledge about, you know, different scales and harmonizing. How has composition affected your other music that you make or how you now approach music in general? Um, I think it's really helped a lot, um, just kind of in different pieces. It's easier for me, I think, to be able to um, play in different rhythmic patterns. I, I have a better understanding. And is there anything else that you would like to add about your experience with your mentor and with the whole Opus experience? I think it's a great experience and I think other people should really, I'd recommend to try it. Emily Boulet wrote a violin and cello duet. Emily's in the sixth grade at Wallingford Elementary. She describes her piece, Wildflowers is a piece that I wanted to have the feeling of happiness and excitement, like flowers in the wind. I also wanted to have the sensation of darkness. I chose violin and cello because they can achieve both of these moods and sensations. <laughs> Smith from Ludlow Elementary is the composer of clarinet funk. Eric described how he picked the clarinet for this piece. I picked clarinet because I tested other instruments and I thought clarinet sounded best. I like the second and eleventh measures because I like jazzy music and I think that those measures are kind of jazzy.
Hopsall, and Wells Mundell Wood, our fifth graders at the grammar school in Putney. They wrote the four seasons together and tell us, we like the sound of the melodies and harmonies as the instruments switched seasons and thought the transition sounded like the gradual change into the next season. My name is Dale and Rosa, and I'm an eighth grader at the Barnett Elementary School. Right now, I use MuseScore, which is a an open source downloadable software. It's for free from online. I, in the past, I've used NoteFlight, which I really don't like, but it's also free online software. And I've also used Sibelius in the past, which is um, another professional grade software. How has technology helped you with composition? It's easier to write music on a computer than just on pencil and paper because it's much faster, it's much um, it's much more fluid, at least for me, and you don't have to worry about your handwriting be, being too bad to read. Most of the time I start with an instrument and then transcribe what I've played on the instrument. And what instrument do you write on? I usually write on a piano or sometimes on a violin or sometimes on a guitar. How did your online mentor help you with your composition? Um, my online mentor was Matt Pod. He was great. He told me what places were um, horrible, what places were good, and he told me exactly how to fix the parts that were horrible. Can you describe what it was like hearing your piece rehearsed today for the first time, heard played by live musicians? It's, it, it always gives me chills when I have a piece played because there's so much um, heart that is put into the music by the um, musicians that isn't there and it, with it, when a computer's playing it back to me. So it's always a powerful experience. Dalen Rosa is an eighth grader at Barnett High School. He tells us about Overture to Mud Season. This piece is intended to portray Vermont's infamous fifth season, Mud Season. The piece opens with the end of winter and the beginnings of warmer times. The second part depicts a hapless driver becoming mired in a muddy stretch of road. He is forced to admit defeat and wait for rescue. The last section begins with the call of the red green blackbird and shows the drying of the ground and the beginning of spring.
Kaplan, a sixth grader from Charlotte Central School, wrote duet for flute and violin. He wrote, I chose flute and violin because I believe that they both have, very, have a very nice sound that can take on whatever meaning or purpose that you want them to. I also partially, partially chose to use the violin because I play the violin myself and enjoy its sound. Abby Crowley, I'm in sixth grade, I'm at Holly Elementary School. What software or program did you use to compose? NoteFlight. How was technology helping you with your composition? Um, it helped me because sometimes I would just be like using NoteFlight and come up with like phrases online and sometimes I would come up with them and write them down like I would be messing around on the piano and come up with something but it was like most helpful to hear my ideas played so I could like listen to all the things, how it sound. Tell me what it was like to hear your piece being played live today. It was really cool, because I'd always heard it on the computer, but it was a lot better in person. It was really cool to hear like, oh, I don't know that, I made that. And it was really cool to like watch someone play it. Has composing helped you as a performer or a music student? It does, because now I have greater appreciation for when I look at the score and I'm playing something on a piano. And it helps me, because like when I'm reading music, I read music a lot better than I did before. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, this is a really great program. And if you haven't tried it yet, you really should. And I want to say thank you to all the people who are involved with Music Comp, all the people, like the mentors, musicians, everyone, and especially my teachers for like encouraging me and giving me this opportunity. Snowy Blues was written by Abby Crowley from Mount Holly Elementary School. Abby's in the sixth grade. She described her work, I chose the title for my piece because the notes represent snowflakes falling out of the sky, a crackling fire, and hot cocoa. Also, the days that I've been working on this piece, it has been snowing. <laughs>
Next on the program is Festive Dance by Emily Lurby, a sixth grader at Hardwick Elementary. Emily wrote, I really loved writing this piece. It was hard because I had to find the notes that really clicked together and fit. But it was easy because I could make my own story out of the music instead of having someone else tell me what to start on. Ethan Duncan, a seventh grader from Williston Central School, describes his work, Scottish Sailor Song, as a continuation of his theme from last opus of songs from around the world. It is meant to resemble a bagpipe, Scotland's national instrument.
name is Jonna Saltzman. I am a senior at North Country Union High School. Has composing helped you as a performer or a music student? Yes, composing has helped me as a musician and a performer because you are in there in the composer's shoes and you understand why that accent is there or why that staccato is there. So you really find yourself being more observant and try to and you put more effort into making sure that those are exactly the way they want them to be. Technology has helped me with composing because I come up with ideas like out of the blue, out of nowhere, and I need to write them down fast or else I'm going to forget them. And being able to have the tools to input notes on like in a moment's notice is wonderful and it helps me a lot. How did your online mentor help you with this? My online mentor, um, Matt Pod, was wonderful. He encouraged me to keep the very odd time signature that I used in my piece. In my piece I used 7-8, which is not very common. <laughs> and instead of discouraging me from going out of the box and trying something new, he really encouraged me to use this new um, or this unknown territory and to the best of my advantage. live for the first time today. It was amazing. It's it's so cool when you have real live musicians putting th themselves into the piece. So you don't just have this inanimate object playing back notes. You have real people putting their their themselves into the notes that you've written. It's amazing. Jonna Saltman is a senior at North Country Union High School. She tells us the night of the San Dien is the Romanian celebration of the summer solstice. There is an age-old belief that this day holds immeasurable magic, from aiding in having a good harvest and picking plants that have magically potent healing qualities on this evening, to even telling the future.
from Rutland Intermediate School is a sixth grader. Perilous Journey describes a journey through a dark cavern, finally ending at the other end. When I first started to work on the composition, the opening theme in the cello was the first musical idea that came to mind, and when I heard it played back, it inspired me to tell a story about going through a cave.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ludlow and our beautiful town hall. My name is Connie Wilcox. I'm the music teacher here in the Ludlow Schools in Mount Holly. It's great to have you here. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank a team of people because I, I'm kind of the contact person, but I have a great team of people working behind the scenes to make this a, a success this evening. I'd like to thank Ralph Pace and the Friends of the Ludlow Auditorium for all their help. Thank you, Ralph. I'd also like to thank Carol Hastings and her wonderful, fabulous crew at the Annunciation Church for our meal this evening. And I'd also like to thank uh, Ms. Cherie Geimer, who was in charge of the refreshments during the afternoon for our composers. So, so thank you. I'm Erin McGill. I'm 14 years old, and I'm from Harwood Union Middle School. After composing, you look at music really differently, the music you're playing because you know what it must have been like to write it, so you have a new appreciation for it. And what was the title of your piece? Shades of Purple. How did you come up with the title? Well, purple is my favorite color, and as I started to write, I thought, this really sounds sort of purplish, so then I specifically made each, each section after that to be purple. I was thinking, can sort of connected at the beginning, and then those, but the two sixteenth notes are ta ta. Da 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 da. That doesn't have to be as together. Okay. It's just the beginning and the end that are. Okay. Shades of Purple is a trio for flute, clarinet, and viola. Aaron McGill from Harwood Union School tells us, this piece reminds me of the color purple, and each section is a different shade. It starts dark purple, then becomes bright purple, then magenta. The B section is lavender, and then it goes back to the beginning.
is by Wayne Alexander, a sixth grader at Glover School. He describes his work, at first, I have named the song Ray Dorian Tune because my teacher and I discovered that it is not in the key of C, like it looks like in the key signature, but in the mode of Ray Dorian. My new title resonance means loud, deep, and reverberating. I think that the title suits it. Rachel Schwartz. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Harvard Union High School. What was it like to hear your piece played for the first time? It was really cool. I'd never heard my own piece played in live at all and I've never written for strings either so that was a cool experience as well. Um, I th think sustained, probably. I had to change the dynamic markings a little bit because forte on the computer might be completely out of balance and it should be mezzo piano or mezzo forte in real life. Would you recommend it to other students? Absolutely. I mean, if, if you have any interest in composing, it's awesome to hear your pieces played. Um, it's a really cool thing. String Quartet is by Rachel Swarsh, a ninth grader from Harwood Union High School. Her work starts peacefully and languidly in the first movement and becomes desperate and frantic in the second. The idea behind the second movement was to contrast the first with one motive that didn't vary much throughout the piece. There's only one movement uh, that we have.
What software program do you use to compose? Um, in our school, we use the software program Sibelius. How has technology helped you with composition? Technology has really helped me with composition because I'm a very in-the-moment composer. If I come up with an idea, I'm not going to remember it five minutes from now, so I need to be able to play it on a piano and have it on the piece of music so that I can have this idea for later. So it's really helpful with that. And how did your online mentor help you with your composition? My online mentor, she helped me out with using the cello and the violin to their full potential, telling me what they can and could not do so that I can make my piece the best it could be and the easiest for the instrumentalist so that they can learn it quickly. Actually, uh, <laughs> I think we're naturally decrescendo. Um, maybe a little bit, but I want that final note to be lou louder and kind of final. And this is because I have the story that goes with it. This is the okay. end. This is when the sun comes up and you realize, oh no, I'm trapped in Brigadoon for a hundred uh, years. All right. So that kind of thing. What was it like to hear your piece for the first time live? To hear my piece live, it was exhilarating. Um, this was a really big moment for me because I've been working really hard on this piece and to hear it played live was just the most fantastic feeling to know that something that I've created is now going to be shared with the world. Do you think composing has helped you as a performer or as a music student? Like Composing has definitely helped me as a performer. When I play my saxophone now I really take the time to think about the certain part that my instrument is playing in the whole composition and I really try to adhere now to the composer's wishes because I realize that they're all, all those decisions are there for a reason. Anything else you'd like to say? I'd like to thank the mentors for giving up their precious time to help us out and make us better composers. I'd like to thank Mr. Pru for all of his support. And I'd like to encourage the rest of the students out there that haven't tried this project yet, MIDI Comp, to try it because you never know and it could be one of the most amazing experiences of your life. The Misty City of Brigadoon was written by Meredith Fields, a senior at North Country Union High School. This piece is based off of the Scottish legend of a disappearing city called Brigadoon. This piece reflects old style Celtic music with the second movement being a jig and the first movement being reflective of music used to call fairies and spirits.
Holland Desh. Um, I'm from Montpelier and I'm 12 years old. Uh, my piece was called Midnight Ride. Um, it's just the general theme of the piece being kind of a um, dramatic run along, um, just kind of inspired it by, uh, by just the feel of it and it, just the general where the, how the piece moved along and how it, where it went it, with, the, with the notes. What was it like to hear it play? Uh, it was incredible. They, were, they did a really good job and um, there was a few changes made because obviously it's real instruments. Um, on the computer it sounds very different. Um, the interface is different. Um, just the piece was needed to be edited, like the dynamics and things. There's also some parts where uh, it was somewhat hard, difficult for the um, for the instrumentalists to play. Could you take a breath? There is one spot here. Yeah. Before before the Oh, I don't need that many times. Actually, can do. Okay. Can wait a bit longer. Uh, do it. Colin Desh is a seventh grader at Main Street Middle School in Montpelier. He describes Midnight Ride. This piece is meant to envision a daring escape from some sort of threat through a forest. The rider goes through some sketchy areas and is almost caught by this threat, but eventually escapes and comes to civilization, where he is finally safe and sound.
Rosie Sicardo is a fifth grader at Ludlow End Elementary. She wrote, ta-da, and tells us about it. I like the beginning of my piece because the staccato adds character to my melody. I think the harmony of the clarinet and the flute throughout the piece sounds aerial. I think my piece sounds cheerful and happy. I'm 12 years old and I go to Harwood Union Middle School. My piece is called The Bass Place. How did you come up with that? What inspired you? I came up with that because I had originally thought of the melody for the bass and so it seemed like a fitting title to have bass in it and it seemed like not a very moving place like the bass knew where it wanted to be and it was right in that place and it wasn't going anywhere so I named it The Bass Place. Would you recommend this program to other students? I would certainly recommend this. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Every, everybody should be doing this. The Bass Place is a trio for bass, bass clarinet, and flute. It was written by Brendan McGill, a seventh grader at Harwood Union Middle School. The piece gets in a very rhythmical groove, changes rhythms a few times, and then repeats the same rhythm it started with.
So what software program do you use to compose? We use Sibelius. How has technology helped you with composition? It helps me in that I can hear back the music that I'm composing. How did your online mentor help you with your composition? Um, my on online mentor helped me in that um, just getting the instruments so that they sound better together versus one used more than another. Tell me about hearing your piece live for the first time. Um, hearing it live was different because you hear more accents that you don't usually hear through Sibelius. Do you think composing has helped you as a performer? I think it has in that you can tell more of what they knew and what you can add as yourself to make it a little bit better. So do you, when you play your trumpet, do you think of it any differently now that you've been composing? I do. I play more to what the, dy the dynamics and everything else wants me to play. Is there anything else you'd like to share in this interview? Um, I'd like to thank all the mentors as well as Mr. Pru among all the other teachers to, that helped all the composers to get to where they're at right now. Brad Petzold, a senior at North Country Union High School, wrote Schizophrenic Daydream. He tells us, I named this piece because it's dark and you can't expect what is coming next. It's always a surprise. And the final chord is the point where the person wakes up. Ian Morvan tells us, Frolic and Despair has become much more than a simple composition to me. It is transformed into a useful tool I have been using to express myself. Frolic and Despair is based off of the last half year of my life. During this time, things have gone from free, fun, and energetic to dark, scary, and unknown. Ian Morvan is a 10th grader at Springfield High School.
is by Amy Belliveau, a senior at Exton High School. She writes, this atonal piece is for a clarinet with a string quartet. It uses texture, rhythm, and pitch patterns to achieve a sense of tension and release. Jessica Bellavo is a seventh grader at A.D. Lawton School in Essex. The year gone by is a string piece inspired by the minute waltz, or the first four notes of it. The variety and mood and nostalgic theme is what brought me to my title.
to pursue their love for composition. So thank you so much. This is Nathan Watts, by the way. Hi. Hey, Nathan Watts. Where are you from? You are I am also from Essex, and I am a bassoonist, yes. <laughs> Is that something you would like us to come down so that can that can come out? Because I was I was leaning in to hear it. It was really pretty. Yeah, she has she it. has louder. It, this is at uh, like starting at twenty seven. Yeah. For four bars, Letitia, it's you. <laughs> so yeah. we're listening. For so that. we should all be under her. Yes. The jig was really good. Um, just pay attention to articulations. You were getting almost all of them though, which was fantastic. Um, I put a lot of kind of finicky stuff in there. Just he had a year and a half to work on it. So yeah. <laughs> started this in December of 2012. Nice. Where was I like it? The and, that, and this is the finale. That's the last piece that we do. Great. So it would be great getting everybody up there. So are things clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Thank you guys very much. Yeah. yeah. Helpful. Nathan Watts is a senior at Essex High School. He explains his work, Time in Memorial. It's based on a piano piece I wrote when I was trying to explain my complex frustration about an event that had occurred. Unable to fully express it with words, I sat down at the piano in the room and started improvising, showing them how I felt through music. Once I had finished, they understood how I felt and had experienced it themselves through the music.
fantastic musicians.